I know what my intent is and I'm very grounded in it. Um, and I deploy enormous amounts of empathy to my haters. When somebody leaves a comment on my Facebook or anywhere else that I'm a charlatan or a snake oil salesman or my daddy gave me the money to build the liquor store and I shouldn't be listened to, I understand why they say that. Um, I know it's not true. And, uh, and you know, it feeds me in a very good way. Um, and so for me, to be very honest with you, brother, it's been very easy because when your intent is pure and comes from a good place, I think about succeeding in one very simple story. There are two ways, my friends, to build the biggest building in town. Step number one, just build the biggest building in town. <laughs> Step number two, build a decent sized building and then spend all your time trying to tear down everybody else's building around you down so you end up being the biggest building in town. My friend, 95% of people try to do number two. But when you know you can build the fucking biggest building in town, you do that. And so because I know what my intent is, I just don't value anybody's opinion about me, including my parents and wife and children, more than I value my opinion about myself. Long before I was Gary Vee, this is what I was doing for my high school friends who were doing stupid things like drugs and alcohol or driving drunk because they wanted to act cool in front of somebody. This is just about self-esteem. It's so simple, it's almost overly emotional for me. This is about self-esteem. The way I choose to do it, and you know this is how I do it, is I go directly at it. If you're, you can, every one of us can think of somebody we care about right now that's just not doing it right, and all you have to do is sit them down and tell them they're not doing it right, but we don't want to do that because we'd rather not short-term hurt their feelings and let them fail long-term, which is remarkably crazy if you give a fuck about somebody. So what can you do as not Gary Vee? Have the actual conversation and tell your sister, your mom, your uncle, your aunt, your child, your best friend, the next time they come up with an excuse, that it's a fucking excuse. The reason I say the thing that if there's anybody that ever looked like you that made it, then there's no excuse, yeah. is because I believe it. You know, it's really hard, you're in an argument and the, your friend tells you, that's great, Gary, but both my parents were alcoholics and that really fucked me up. Right now you're on the defense, that's a good first punch by them. I'm like, cool, we don't need to use me. If anybody has ever been successful that had two alcoholic parents, which by the way, I know of three, well then, now what's your excuse, Karen? We are just so interested in blaming everybody else and excuses, because we don't want to take on responsibility. And somewhere a long time ago, I went completely, I only take, I, do you know I think everything is my fault? Like, all of it? Like, I think it's weirdly cloudy outside right now and not nice out, my fault. Like, his scar, my fault. Like, I fucking just default into my fault. And everybody tries to do everything else the other way. And let me tell you how good life becomes when you take on responsibility. It gets real good. Uh, some of you, and there's a lot of you that follow me, you know why I keep bringing up the last scene of Eight Mile, the Eminem movie? How many people have seen that movie? Great. The last scene, they go into the battle, he makes fun of himself the whole time because it leaves the other person with nothing. The leverage is in being accountable of everything. The leverage is exposing your weaknesses. I proudly talk about passing on Uber twice, being a DNF student. You know, I proudly talk about my shortcomings, right? I can't wait for more bad things to happen. I mean it, because I will talk about them because what, you're so fucking perfect? Fuck you, right? So how do you do it? You have the conversation and you realize that you're doing a disservice to the people you love the most by holding your mouth shut because you're not willing to deal with the short-term conflict. You can't fake environment. The amount of rich friends I have who send their kid for four days to Africa to build a school and think now they're grounded is fucking ludicrous. You can't fake environment. 
If you are privileged, you are privileged. If you are not, you are not. The great gift and curse for all of us is we had too much or we had too little. Then your DNA and parenting and environment take over on which path you decide. What I'm doing is there's a couple things that are my religious 10 commandments and I'm sticking to those and everything else I'm unemotional about. So number one, kindness. Kindness is non-debatable. If Xander and Misha ever deploy meanness on somebody else, especially based on how much money mommy and daddy made, I will physically punch them in the face. That's number one. Kindness is not debatable. Number two, they have to really love what they're into. I have no interest in my kids being an entrepreneur. I have no interest in my kids being a showman. I want them to be what the thing they love the most is. Number three, there's no such thing as fourth place trophies. All these privileged kids are being protected from hurt feelings by parents today, which is why they're gonna suck. (laughs) Because in real life, you come in fourth place and eighth place. So in my Upper East Side of Manhattan culture, there's a lot of eighth place trophies and everybody's fucking great at everything. I tell little kids that are six, you suck. (laughs) Their parents get mad at me, but I'm like, Ricky sucks at golf. (laughs) So no make believe. Um, And then number four, almost everything else does not matter. Number five, update the list as soon as I feel like I have to, in real time, as soon as I see something that makes me have to update the list. But if you have empathy, you have everything. It's just so big. It's so big. It makes you incredible at sales. I'm a great all-time salesman because I'm empathetic. I basically can't even live my life without, I watch my mother, and she has it too, but we have different, obviously we're different. (laughs) She's the centerpiece of every single person that knows her. Her empathy for everybody becomes the leverage of everybody needing her. And she took it in a way, and I got the benefit of watching it, that I think allowed me to find a little bit of a better lines in the sand where to stop and start. And I'm different in a lot of ways, businessy and competitive, and we're different. But when you have empathy, you have everything. And uh, I just, you know, there's a lot of things I care about, right? Gratitude, it surely makes you positive if you have perspective on that. But if I had to pick one in the way you're asking, it's empathy, man. If you just, like all of you care about you, not your customers, not your employees, not your vendors. And I get it, you have to take care of your family. I get it, but it's the way. If you care about them more and figure out what's left for you and what to do with it, you will have for the rest of your life. And I'm sure it's very biblical and very faith-driven and very altruistic. It doesn't make it any less true. Empathy. Kind of after five years, I made it, so to say, in, uh, in, on, in my own terms. And now I, I find myself not working anymore from two to seven in the night, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit concerned that, uh, is, is this it? Like, how can I push to, to go for, forward? Are you, are you worried that you're content and you're trying to yeah. get the spark? Yes. Maybe you need to do something else. Maybe you're content in what got you here. Yes. Wine library. I built one of the largest liquor wine stores in America, and I did it. And I was like, wait a minute, the liquor laws are bad. This doesn't feel like it's it. I made it, you know. Um, I, did, I started a YouTube show. Maybe you made it, thank God, in, in what you, I don't know what you do. Maybe you need to do something completely different and have the thrill that I always have, which is the climb is much more fun than the stuff. It's, it's, it's that great guy in the back, the good looking guy with the beard. I want him to love the process, not the idea of the Mexico beach. Maybe you're like me and you love the process so much that now that the process is not fun, 
even though the money's there, even the opportunity's there, you're missing the spark, the climb. You know why I love coming to Southeast Asia or Norway? I, I wish none of you knew who I was. That's the climb. People think it's the other way. I don't want anybody to know who I am. That's actually probably my biggest fear is the game of like getting known. You know, I plan on getting to all 7.3 billion of you. And then when that's done, it's gonna be like, fuck, do I have to go to Mars or, you know, like, you know, so I think that I have a feeling it might just be that you're looking for a new process and a new start from the bottom to build up. How can I know what to choose next? Just pick something. It's a really interesting question. I really believe that. Like, there's, I don't know you, right? But there's things that are on your mind. I would start with interests outside of work. Like, if I would start something, like if you're into video games, I think esports is about to be one of the biggest industries in our society over the next 30 years. Maybe you don't know anything about esports, but you like video games. Here's the chance to start. I was looking into it actually. Yeah, so now, from 7 p- p.m. to two in the morning for next four months, you learn everything about esports, and then you decide what you want to make. I think you want the process, which is incredible because it's going to lead to a lot of success, which is why you've probably fi- figured out how to win in five years because you love the process, so you were willing to eat shit and work at night and be patient, and that's why you got somewhere. Now you got somewhere, and you're like, wait a minute, fuck. You know, you're calibrating, you're young. You need to go out and do other new processes if you've got complete flexibility, I would do it around other things you like. Music, sports, beer. Like, I don't know what your interests are outside of it, but you start there, because that's a double, I mean, Vayner Sports, me and AJ are building this sports agency. It's a real fun thing. Like, we're gonna kill everybody, and it's gonna be a huge company, and it's fun to talk about football. Like, we know about trades before they come out in public, you know? We like it. So I think if you can do it around something you like, I would go and look and discover the, business behind the things that you're interested in. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.